I'm glad you're here today. What we're going to do in math class is we're going to use words, variables, tables, and graphs to create and analyze patterns of relationships. This is going to allow us to use this data to make predictions and draw conclusions. You could use this for something as simple as figuring out how much supplies you need for a project, for a craft project, or um, figuring out how many hours you need to work in order to buy something special. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to go over our content objective. Our content objective is what I want you to know by the end of math class. Here's our content objective. I can use tables and graphs to identify independent and dependent quantities and write the equations from the table. Now, in order to do this, we're going to have to use some academic vocabulary. Some of these words might be new to you, some of them might be old to you, but by the end of math, we're all going to be using them. Now, one word you need to be able to use is the word variable, rule, graph, table, dependent quantity, independent quantity, independent variable, and dependent variable. We're going to be using these all throughout math today. Okay, now let's talk about what kind of background knowledge that you need to do, that you need to have in order to be successful in math today. One thing you need to know is remembering how to use those input and output charts. When we use those input and output charts, we had to find the rule. Can you find the rule for a series of numbers? Remembering, remember, finding the rule for a series of numbers has to do with skip counting or sometimes with multiples. All right, now let's look at independent and dependent variables. One way to know the difference between an independent quantity and a dependent quantity is remembering this phrase. Dependent quantity depends on independent quantity. Dependent depends. Let's look at some examples so we can think about the relationship between a dependent quantity and an independent quantity. Now, let's think about um, having to work. Now, the amount of hours you work is going to be your independent quantity. How much money you earn is going to be your dependent quantity. The more you work, the more money you will earn. The less hours you work, the less money you would earn. Dependent depends on independent. Let's think about an example with a car. Now, our dependent quantity is going to be how far you can drive. Now, how far you can drive depends on how much gas is in your car. How far you could drive depends on the amount of gas in your car. What that means is if you have a lot of gas in your car, you can drive a long distance. If you have a little bit of gas in your car, you won't be able to drive as far. Let's think of one more example, and this is a sports example. Now the independent quantity is going to be who scores the most points. The dependent quantity is going to be the winner of the game. The person who, or the team who scores the most points is going to be the winner of the game. The winner of the game is dependent upon, or depends upon, who scores, scores the most points. Okay, now let's use independent and dependent quantities to make some equations. Equations can be hard to make, but we're going to work on it together. Here's an example. Kira is making bracelets for her friends. Each bracelet has seven beads on it. Let's think about the relationship. One bracelet has seven beads. In order to show this relationship better, we put this information into a table. This helps us see the relationship much easier. Now, in this column, we have the bracelets for the friends. That's our independent quantity. And in this column, we have the total number of beads, the dependent quantity. How many beads you use depends on how many bracelets you're going to make. Now, let's look at the relationship between these numbers. We're going to find the rule. I see 7, 14, 21, 28. Sounds like skip counting by 7. So if we have one bracelet, we're going to have 7 beads. We can show that in a numerical expression, 1 times 7. Two bracelets, we're going to use 14 beads, or a numerical expression, 2 times 7. Finally, 3 times 7 gives us 21 for three bracelets, and four bracelets, four times seven is 28. Equations can be hard to make. 
So one way to help you remember to use the right variables in the right places is that you can draw pictures. Right here we have a picture of a little girl for the bracelets for the friends. Right here we have a bracelet that shows the total number of beads. And we can show that in the equation. The total number of beads equals the amount of bracelets for, for friends times seven. That's one way we can make an equation. Let's try making an equation together. Okay, we have another table that shows us some variables. We have the time in seconds and the distance in feet. Now the time in seconds is going to be our independent variable and the distance in feet is going to be our dependent variable. I'm gonna show the time in seconds, our independent variable, I'm gonna call that x. And our distance in feet, I'm going to call that dependent variable y. A lot easier to say. Okay, now let's think about our rule. We have 35, 70, 105, 140. Hmm, do you see the rule, how it's increasing by 35? So my numeric, numerical expression, I can say 1 times 35 for one second gives us a, a, a total of 35 seconds. I'm sorry, 35 feet. For this one, two seconds times 35 gives us a distance of 70. Two times 35 is 70. I can show that three times 35 for my numerical expression for the distance in feet. And I can show four times 35 for my numerical expression. Now it's time for us to write an equation. Do you notice that this number matches this number? That is our independent variable. So I can say 35 times x, 35x, gives us our dependent variable y. 35x equals y is one way to make an equation. All right, now what I want you to do is I'm going to give you some time and I want you to practice finding independent and dependent variables. I've bookmarked some websites that I want you to take a look at. Here's some websites. This first website gives lots of good information about identifying independent and dependent variables. The next website I want you to look at The next website I want you to look at, it doesn't want to look at you, but here it is. This is a great video that talks about finding independent and dependent variables. Please watch that. The next website I want you to look at is really great. It has cards right here, and when you click on the card, it gives you the independent, or it gives you um, some variables, and what you need to do to decide is which is the independent variable and which is the dependent variable. Then you can click on the card, and it flips the card over, and you can check your answer to see if you got it right. The final website I want you to look at is, it gives you some scenarios. Some of them are real life scenarios, and you can pick or figure out which is the independent and which is the dependent variable by clicking them, and you submit, and also it will check your answer. This is great practice for identifying those independent and dependent variables. Okay, now let's think about what we have learned so far. Right now, I want you to think, and then we're going to talk about some of these questions. Now, here's the first question I want you to think about. How can an equation represent how the independent quantity affects the dependent quantity? Take a minute to think. Now turn to your neighbor and talk to him or her for a few minutes. Okay, let's come back together as a big group. Who would like to share what he or she talked about with their partner? Okay, now I'm going to give you another question to think about. How do tables equations, and graphs help us understand the relationship between independent and dependent variables. Take a minute to think about it. Okay, now turn to a new partner, and I want you guys to talk about what this question means to you with equations, graphs, independent, dependent variables. Okay, let's come back together as a group. Who would like to share what he or she talked about with their partner?
Okay, now this is a perfect time to talk about real life examples. Now, what I want you to think about is where would you use a relationship with independent and dependent variables in real life? I heard somebody say studying for a test and their grade. You're right, the more you study for a test, the better grade you get. The less you study for a test, the worse grade you'll get. Studying for a test is your independent variable because, and the grade is your dependent variable because your dependent variable depends on your independent. I heard another person say saving allowance and wanting to buy a new video game. Saving the allowance is your independent variable because the more you save, the better or more games you can buy. That's our dependent variable. I use I use independent and dependent variables in my life all the time because when I want to buy supplies for my class, the first thing I have to think of is how many students I have. That's my independent variable. My dependent variable is how many supplies I'm going to buy because I want to make sure everybody has, everybody has enough materials so the more students I have, the more supplies I'll need. Okay, now I'm going to give you a chance to try. With your partner, you are going to get a problem that looks similar to one of these. With you and your partner, you're going to talk about the independent and dependent variable. Make sure you identify those first. After you identify the independent and dependent variable, I want you to take some time and I want you to write an equation. While you're working, I'm going to be walking around the room and I'm going to be helping. I really value friends that are working together, so that's what I'm looking for in addition to finding out the right math work. Okay, now it's time to show what you know. Here's your assessment. We're going to talk about rental rates. I want you to think about the problem and then I want you to show what you know. You work for a rental car company. You need to create a pricing option that charges a rate per mile. Your total fee must be less than $200. Make a table to represent your pricing model through mathematical reasoning. Show your calculations and reasoning. Identify the independent variable, dependent variable, and your equation. Okay, let's think about what's happening here. Make sure you make your table. Think about the money, independent or dependent. Think about the amount of miles, independent or dependent. I'm going to let you show what you know. Okay. In this lesson in math today, you learned about relationships between independent and dependent variables. You use these relationships to make equations, and you thought about how you can use these relationships in real life. Thanks for joining me today. And in.